Students returned to Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida Thursday. It has been more than six months since a gunman killed 17 students and staff members and wounded 17 others. New security measures are in place, but some students say they still don't feel safe. CBS News correspondent Adriana Diaz has the latest. Hi, Mickey. Carlos Rodriguez greeted the day with both excitement and dread. This is my first time driving myself to school. Kind of excited because it's my senior year, so. And it's also six months and one day after the anniversary of what happened at my school. As the day gets closer, I've become more nervous. Oh, there's a helicopter. That's a trigger for some of my friends. There's a code red going on. It reminds them of February's rampage. Rodriguez recorded himself hiding that day with his friend, then junior, Alec Lizarraga. This year, it's, it's like a different feeling. I really don't want to go back. Why not? It's, I, 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 I just don't want to be there anymore. In the back of my mind, there's still the thought of a shooter coming into campus. But officials say the school is now safer than ever. There are more cameras, 18 security staff, and doors that lock automatically. Parkland is the heart of this movement. Senior Jacqueline Corrin pushed for gun reform this summer with her classmates and teens touched by urban gun violence. I think we all don't want Parkland to be a dirty word anymore. We want Parkland to be a word that people fear, feel inspired by. It's that positivity that helped Rodriguez get through day one. I tried to keep a smile as much as I could, and I think that's what I'm going to have to do for the rest of the year. Adriana Diaz is in Parkland, Florida, and joins us now. Adriana, you mentioned a few measures the district is taking to enhance security at the school. What more can you tell us about that? Well, the superintendent said that this school now is safer than it has ever been. They doubled the security staff, so it's now 18 security staff total, including three school resource officers. Uh, they've also dedicated one security person to be constantly monitoring the security cameras that are at the school. They've upgraded that surveillance system and added more cameras. Students are required to wear IDs now at all times. And during school, there will be just a single point of entry so that everybody who comes in and out during school hours is checked. These are just some of the measure that, measures that the school is taking place. Uh, there was talk of perhaps trying a pilot program for metal detectors. That now is up in the air. But a lot of students we spoke to said, you can make this as fortified as you want, but we still won't feel safe because of what we experienced. That's right. what they said. And Some students are making the decision to not come back. And speaking of the feelings of the students, what steps are school officials taking to address their emotional and psychological well-being as they return to school? They have special spaces, Tanya, where these students can go if they need a break, if they need to talk to a counselor. Uh, they call them wellness centers. Building 12, where the shooting happened, has been completely blocked off. Uh, there's a 12-foot fence around it. And to make up for that classroom space, they've installed portable classrooms, basically trailers that are designed as classrooms. Two of those classrooms are wellness centers where the students can go for refuge. Uh, there are also therapy dogs back on campus. That was something that they had in the spring after the shooting. Uh, one student we spoke to lit up with joy when he heard that the dogs were coming back. So that's something they really look forward to. And Adriana, as you mentioned, despite all of this, there are still a num number of students who are not returning to school. Who are they and, and what are their specific concerns? Are they still afraid? One student we spoke to ourselves is Anthony Borges. He's 15 years old. He was shot five times during the rampage. Mm -hmm. He said he's afraid to go back to the school. He says, what if there's another Nicholas Cruz that's the shooter? Uh, his parents are disappointed with the way the school is run, the way the school district uh, ran the school. His parents, along with the parents of many other victims, people who did not survive, are really uh, pointing to the superintendent, pointing to the school board, saying that somehow Nicholas Cruz slipped through the cracks. And they want to see a new superintendent. They want to see a new school board. The 
father of Anthony Bohr has told us he's not putting his kid back in this school until there's new leadership. Well, I have to say, I can't say I blame him. I mean, it must be incredibly hard to return to the site of a place where you've been shot five times. Um, Adriana, finally, the March for Our Lives, which has been led by a number of Parkland students, recently wrapped up with a stop in Newtown, Connecticut. What plans do the students have for that movement going forward? Well, we spoke to one of the founders of March for Our Lives, Jacqueline Corrin. She says even though they're back at school, they are not slowing down. She plans to continue the advocacy that they have started with not only just other students here at Parkland, but really they are partnering with students across the country from urban areas who, who experience gun violence in their daily lives. They have emphasized the importance of this partnership because they say we don't want to act like we're the only people who've been affected by this. Gun violence has been a problem in this country for for a very long time and there are other teenagers who uh, feel the repercussions of it every single day so they feel it is critical to work with these other young people together and what they did was they launched a two-month bus tour across the country dozens of cities uh, they were living on a bus with the with these urban teenagers uh, forging relationships, friendships, and then taking their message forward. That message is they have a 10-point plan on their website uh, that, that calls for gun reform, different gun reform measures. They want to see legislation. They also want to see voter turnout. They emphasize that their organization is nonpartisan. They say, we don't care who you vote for, but we want you to vote. And they told us they are confident that they will affect change in November. A new generation. All right, Adriana Diaz, thank you.